Dear students, welcome to the Pediatric Neurology Online course. We start with cerebral palsy. What's cerebral palsy? It is defined as a static, non-progressive movement and posture disorder due to brain injury. Movement and posture. Not necessarily he is not able to walk, but he can walk in a bad manner, a normal gait, which occurs early in development up to three years of age. And cerebral palsy in Arabic means al-shalal al dimari It is not an etiological diagnosis, but a clinical syndrome, a manifestation of static encephalopathy. Encephalopathy means disturbance of brain cell function and static. It occurs at a certain time as an acute encephalopathy, but there is no more progression. Like in hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, there is this damage to the brain cells. Then there is gliosis, and we see the after effect, which is palsy. Uh, it's referred only to motor dysfunction. So cerebral refers to Cerebrum, the brain, and palsy refers to disorder of movement. What are the causes of cerebral palsy? Or, in another word, etiologic diagnosis, when you formulate the diagnosis. Antenatal causes during pregnancy. We have genetic factors, toxins, placental insufficiency, and tosh infection. Natal causes as prematurity before 37 or before 34 weeks of gestation with the liability of intraventricular hemorrhage and ventilation, obstructed traumatic labor and birth asphyxia causing HIE or hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy at birth or due to any event causing asphyxia. This will cause acute brain injury and will be followed later on with abnormal development. Both natal causes as infection, urinary meningitis, or trauma and asphyxia can occur at any time. What are the classifications of cerebral palsy? It should be mentioned in the diagnosis. First classification is according to the system involved or past physiology. This is a pyramidal system, which is the most common. We will say spastic cerebral palsy. It occurs in 77% of the cases. The lesion usually in the motor cortex or the corticospinal tract. Extrapyramidal will involve the basal nuclei and it will be presented clinically as acetoid or dystonic. And involvement of the cerebellum will lead to ataxia, abnormal gait. And sometimes we have mixed cases. It's about 5% of the cerebral pulse to have acetoid and spastic, a mixed case of involvement of tracts. Another classification is topographic or anatomical, or how many lamps involved in the weakness or weakened. Could be quadriplegic, where before Lamps will be involved in the same degree, fine and gross motor function impairment. In hemiplegia, half of the body will be involved, one side upper and lower limb, with involvement of the upper limb usually more than the lower limb. Diplegia, the legs are worse than the arms. He can not move appropriately, but he can use his hand, at least crossly. It will be clumsy, 
but he can use his he can use his, his hands. In paraplegia, the lower limbs should be involved and the upper limbs should be normal, fine and gross. The severity classification or functional classification, um, the parents always ask about the future. So, in my cases, he can depend on himself with involvement of the fine movements only. He can walk, but in abnormal gait and slower than his peers. In moderate cases, if the gross and fine movement will be involved, he will need support. In severe cases, he will need someone to depend on to perform his daily activity. There is another classification, classification there, or scale can be used in assessment of functional ability, the GMFCS. It is graded from 1 to 5. How will you diagnose cerebral palsy? It's mainly clinical diagnosis. First, in the motor developmental history, there will be a delay in motor development. He will do all the or sometimes some of the uh, developmental milestones, but in a later age than the recorded or the normal. The presence of abnormal muscle tone and posture, abnormal muscle tone in the form of hypotonia or floppy, taking the uh, uh, going with gravity, or hypertonia, like a statue, with fisting, knee flexes all the time. This will lead to the development of contracture, joint contracture, and deformities. A normal movement pattern, as cesarean gait, due to the adductor spasm, and the toe walking, due to the hamstring shortening or hypertonia. In uh, hemiplegia, could be the other limb or the hemiplegic limb will be smaller and will be fisted than the normal one. The presence of persistence of the um, primitive reflexes. One of the most important is the motor reflex, which should disappear by the age of five to six months of age. In a baby with cerebral palsy, there will be delay in the disappearance of these primitive reflexes. Um, any stimulation will provoke the startle, and this will interfere with normal motor development. There will be the delay in the appearance of protective, normal protective and bush reflexes. The most important is the parachute reflex. So what are cerebral palsy associations? Or in order to ask for investigations, what are you going to do for this baby? We said that cerebral palsy is a clinical diagnosis mainly known from the motor developmental history. Seizure, he can develop convulsion at any time according to the severity. So, we will ask for uh, EEG. Presence of hearing and visual impairment. So, we will ask for audiogram to assess the hearing. And if there is defect in hearing, you will not develop speech. So we will need a hearing aid. And if there is visual environment or squint, we will assess with the visual activity and or, or visual evolved potentials and presence of attention deficit hyperactivity or mental retardation or learning disabilities will impair the family functioning 
and the quality of life of the family and of the child who need support who can do an IQ assessment and help him in improving his education. Common problems associated with cerebral palsy is dysphagia due to pseudobulbar palsy, presence of gastroesophageal reflux and constipations will need to malnutrition and move thrust. If the spasticity or hypertonia and abnormal postures not treated, the child might develop joint contractures and deformities and scoliosis of the spinal cord. At a time, fixed deformities will be corrected by operations only, surgery. Treatment of cerebral palsy is supportive. So, what's your plan of treatment for a child with cerebral palsy? Mild, moderate, or severe will be accordingly will improve his capabilities. So, physical and occupational therapy for motor rehabilitation and gait training will be needed. This is the occupational therapy with improving of posture, training to improve his posture, to be upright, to straighten his knees and put his heels on the ground in order to stand and then he will be trained to move or walk, gait training. Management of spasticity is very important because we said that spasticity can lead to joint deformity which will not be corrected. Spasticity itself can co will cause correctable posturing early, but if left, it will lead to permanent joint contraction. Oral antispasticity medication can be used. Injection of botulinum toxin into the muscle can improve joint movement and prevent fractures and formed. Also, the use of orthotics and spasticity splints can prevent the deformities. Also, better correction of deformities would be needed if there is fixed contractures. This boy, before the operation, cannot put his heel on the ground. So they lengthen the calf muscles in order his heels reach the ground and he can support himself in both his balance. It's uh, applicable in diplegic or paraplegic children. What is the treatment plan for delayed speech? He will need speech therapy and special education for mental affection. For children with difficult swallowing and mastication, nasogastric tube feeding or gastrostomy tube feeding will be needed to improve nutrition in cases of pseudopalpar palsy. 